Hello viewers and welcome to a very special video production from a brand new YouTube channel. My name is Mitch and I am the 10th Nazgul. If you've been a long time fan of Cardboard of the Rings or a member of the LOTR LCG community, you've probably noticed that about five or so months ago I've completely vanished from the face of the internet. I've had a whole lot of stuff going in my life since then. I've gotten laid off, I've started a new job, I'm back in school starting a brand new career, I'm pretty much busier than I ever have been before, but I've missed this community so much that I've had to come back. So I've started this new YouTube channel. I'm not sure how often I'll be able to put out content, but I could not stay away, and now I'm back. So some of the things you can expect from me are solo playthroughs, article reviews, coverage of FAQ updates, theme decks, challenge videos, maybe some question and answer type stuff. There's been an absolute glut of content to have come out since I last released a video. I actually have not sat down and played a game of LOTR LCG since August of 2013 when I was at Gen Con playing games with Caleb Grace and Matt Newman, so I'm excited to finally be back and to help ease me back into the game. I've brought a special guest with me today, so why don't you introduce yourself? Hello everyone, it's Matthew, Mitch's former co-host from the Progression series, and now a new co-host on the Grey Company podcast, and I couldn't be more excited to be filming a playthrough video again with you, Mitch. Definitely, and a big part of why I wanted to have Matthew here for the very first video is to announce that he and I, when our schedules can find time for it, are going to be continuing the LOTR LCG progression series. So we'll be covering the remainder of the Against the Shadow adventure packs, which are now all released. We've got the Black Riders Saga expansion to cover, we've got Voice of Isengard coming out soon nightmare decks up through season four on the horizon so there is a tremendous amount of content and i could not be more excited to be getting back to playing this game but before we dive back into the progression series i figure it's probably a good idea to make sure that i even remember how to play this game so today he and i are just going to be having some fun we're going to be taking a casual stroll along the Anduin, so breaking out a core set classic. As you can see, we've already got our table set up out in front of us. We've got our three quest phases out on the table. We've got our encounter deck ready to go, our player decks ready to go. So why don't we take a look at what Matthew and I are going to be playing. So today, unlike in the progression series, he and I are going to be drawing from our entire modern card pool. So I'm going to be running a tactics and spirit deck quite unlike anything I've run in the progression series. I've got Baragond as an excellent defender, I've got Dune here for attacking into the staging area, and I've got the Foundations of Stone version of Glorfindel for questing, for killing, and for making sure that my threat is as low as possible and for keeping nasty bad guys in the staging area. I've got a lot of powerful questing spirit allies like Arwen the Aether Swordsman, and Northern Tracker, as well as a few tactics attachments to beef up Dune here and to make sure that Glorfindel can hit plenty hard. I've got some readying effects, some cancellation effects, and I've even got a little bit of resource redistribution and threat reduction for Matthew's deck. But Matthew, what are you running today? Well, since I allowed you to borrow my favorite hero, Baragond, I decided to play with some heroes that I don't use very often, uh, Bjorn being one of them. I like him a lot, but he's got a high threat. Trusty Legolas, and to offset the high threat of Bjorn and Legolas, I'm using Mary. Uh, obviously not using him for his plus one attack for each Hobbit hero. It's really just for his two willpower and his low threat. I've got a bevy of tactics allies, uh, Landerval perhaps most importantly, in case Bjorn takes too many defenses, and then I have a few uh, attachments and events that I'm hoping to play on Mitch's side of the table, Horn of Gondor on his spirit hero, so um, he has enough to pay for those spirit cards, and also behind strong walls, since I'm sort of trying to take the attack side of combat, 
I'm going to want to make sure that Bjorn is always ready to help defend. So hopefully this is enough for us to tackle the mighty hill troll as we casually stroll down the Anduin. All right, so now that we've taken a look at our decks, Octagon has changed a little bit since I last booted up, so why don't we go ahead and draw our opening hand of six cards, and let's see what we get. So taking a look at my starting hand, I've got a couple awesome tactics attachments that are going to make uh, Barragond into a rock-solid wall early on. I've got a new Black Riders attachment that's going to help Dune here hit very hard. I'll be able to dig for items. I can do some uh, tracking in a particular direction, and uh, I've even got an old wizard ally of ours. Uh, how's your opening hand looking? I'm not uh, in love with it, so I'm going to take a mulligan and hope that this is better. Uh, the mulligan is almost the same as the first hand, but I guess I'm stuck with it. All right, well, with that said, why don't we go ahead and take a look at Quest Phase 1. And for those of you out there that have played this quest before, we're going to be revealing one card each from the top of the encounter deck and adding it to the staging area. So I'm going to make sure that our encounter deck is indeed shuffled, and I'm going to go ahead and control E. So encounter card number one is going to be the East Bite. So we have to travel here. It's one threat, six progress tokens. Not that big of a deal. Encounter card number two is going to be Evil Storm, nice. which is going to do a whole lot of nothing. Yeah. So let's go ahead and flip our first quest card, eight progress tokens. Let's search the encounter deck for a Hill Troll and add it to the staging area. So look at not the bottom cards... I guess the very bottom card was a hill troll, so that works out nicely. Right. It's going to say five minutes into the first video I make an error. So, hill troll is in play. Let's go ahead and start turn one. So I'll make myself first player. I'm going to go ahead and draw one card. Let's do our resources. I ended up drawing the perfect attachment. So moving into planning, I'll strip one resource off Glorfindel for Light of Valinor. I will go ahead and attach a Gondorian shield to Baragond for free. And I'm going to go ahead and spend his resource on a Blade of Westerness uh, onto Dune here. So if he's attacking into the staging area... Uh, an enemy higher than my threat, he's already going to be able to attack for five, which is not too bad. Yeah, and that is it for me. That's a pretty good first turn. I'm going to pay one for a Knight of the Swan. Is that an Outlands ally for you, Matthew? <laughs> Indeed it is, but like the Aether Swordsman, I think the Knights of the Swan is the only other sort of acceptable Outlands uh, card in a non-Outlands <laughs> deck. So, you know, uh, if anything else, he's a cheap chump. Uh, Legolas is going to get his trusty Blade of Gondolin. I can't help but feel like that Knights of the Swan is a bit of a gateway drug, but <laughs> all right. I hope not, and I think that's it for me for my first turn. All right, so I guess that brings us to the quest phase as I look at my cheat sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and commit Glorfindel for an impressive three, and how about yourself? Uh, like I said in the deck portion, Mary's my uh, quester here, so I will send two. All right, so that's going to be a grand total of five. Legolas is probably better served trying to kill something. So let's see what we reveal. And counter card number one is a Goblin Sniper. So nice uh, fodder for Dune here. Exactly. That 48 threat isn't going to be coming down at any time soon. And counter card number two is going to be the Surging Wolf Rider. So, Surge to the Necromancer's Reach. One damage to, nice. uh, looks like Mary, which is actually kind of frightening, considering yeah. he has two hit points, so... You know, I had put Ring Mail on the deck, and I took it out, so <laughs> let's hope I don't regret that. Well, and there's no lore on the table. I'm not running any sort of... I think Gondorian Discipline is the damage prevention effect, so yeah. maybe you're not going to be contributing to questing for too long. Yeah. But it looks like we're up against a total of five threat, which means we're going to break even. 
but we'll be able to deal uh, with these enemies pretty handily. Well, since Mary is near death, I might as well go ahead and pay for this. Uh, Halfling determination, so we'll get plus two willpower until the end of the phase, so we're actually going to make some progress. Okay, so plus two willpower means we're going to end up making a two progress, so not terrible by any means. Of course, we're going to move on to travel. We have to travel to the east bite, so let's make that our active location. Mm -hmm. I'll condense our staging area, and that's going to bring us to the encounter phase. So we cannot optionally engage the goblin sniper, uh, but we can grab the hill troll. We can get the wolf rider. I'm assuming you might want to grab this wolf rider. Um, sure. Okay, so I'll bring him down to you. I think as much as I could defend with Baragond, uh, shall I just leave the hill troll in the staging area? I guess another option we could do is I could take Wolf Rider and kill that, and you could start damaging the hill troll, like I... if we do... We certainly could. Legolas, of course, can kill the Wolf Rider on his own and give us three progress tokens on the East Bite. Um, sure. I'm just wondering if we should already start trying to consider packing damage on the Hill Troll. Thinking things out for a minute, why don't I actually go ahead and optionally engage with the Wolf Rider? Why don't you optionally engage our Hill Troll right off the bat? Okay. I think Dune here will be able to deal with this Goblin Sniper, and then we can start piling damage onto this uh, Hill Troll. Maybe I'll just tank the rider for a little while. So okay. Sounds good. Alright, so I guess we're going to go ahead and transition into the combat phase. Uh, it starts with first player gets a shadow card, and then the next player... For defending attacks, I think I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and do undefended with my Wolf Riders. So let's see what the shadow card is. This is <laughs> actually going to be plus two attack, which is pretty miserable. But Glorfindel does have that pool of uh, five hit points. So I'll assign the four damage to him. And then for the Hill Troll, I think I'm going to assign uh, Baragond as the defender there. So with his six defense, he's going to go ahead and receive that attack. And the Shadow card is going to be nothing. Nice. So he takes no damage. For attacking back, I'm going to go ahead and have Glorfindel target the Wolf Rider. So it's going to take uh, three points of damage. It's going to be killed. And I'm going to have Dune here target uh, the Goblin Sniper here. So it's going to be killed before its forced effect can trigger. So he's going to do a massive 5 damage, and that's going to die as well. And how about your combat? Well, I can swing for 9 against the Hill Troll. Okay, so it's got defense of 3. So it's going to end up taking uh, 6 points of damage on the first turn. So... None too shabby, and our staging area is clear. So yeah. I suppose that brings us to the end of combat. Let's go ahead and get rid of that shadow card. And unless you want to take any options or actions, I guess that's refresh. Yep, yeah, let's refresh. All right, so refresh. It automatically kicks up our threat by one. I've made you the first player. And let's go ahead and do our resources and draw one card give myself a little bit of extra attack power. Let me play the Trollshaw Scout. Okay. And uh, that is it for me. All right. I happen to draw a little bit of death insurance for Mary, uh, but I'm not thinking I'm going to play anything this turn. I could do a little bit of astronomy, but I think I'm going to save up to uh, make some tracks in the future. So... Uh, nothing for me. Okay, I will say that your table talk has gotten much more um, opaque since the last time we played. I'm having to astronomy. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm not so sure. But uh, all right, very good. I've got the I've got the telescope busted out. So, all right. So <laughs> questing. Who are you going to send? Eh, well, it might be risky. I'll send Mary. All right. 
probably not as risky as... Well, I suppose if we see two treacheries, maybe it'll be risky. Uh, I'm just going to send Glorfindel. So okay. it looks like grand total of five. All right. So with that five, let's go ahead and see what we reveal. Encounter card number one is driven by shadow. So each enemy in each location currently in the staging area, not in the staging area until the end of the round, but currently gets plus one threats, and this is going to end up gaining surge. So driven by shadow surges to encounter card number one. Uh, remove four progress token from the current quest card. So we lose two progress, not yeah. a big deal. I'll get rid of that. Encounter card number two is going to be reveal two additional cards from the encounter deck. I could cancel that, but I don't think I'm going to bother. So encounter card number one, uh, each location in the staging area gets plus one threat until the end of the phase. Nobody has threat 35 or higher, so this isn't doing a whole lot. Encounter card number two is not a location so it's going to be these nasty wargs and uh that is pretty much that so looks like we're up against a grand total of two we're going to make one two three progress on our active location which might be enough for legolas to clear it during combat so for travel we don't have any options for the encounter phase, we've got this enemy sitting here. I think I'm going to go ahead and pull this down to me so you can deal with that hill troll. Uh, Baragond and Bjorn are both sentinel defenders, so maybe we can help one another out. Uh, the wargs aren't hitting particularly hard, so I think this works for me. Okay. For combat going and dealing shadow cards we start with you as the first player and then with me how do we want to resolve this attack i'm thinking baragon defending for you sure sounds good to me all right so baragon and the shadow card is nothing so once again baragon takes no damage and all is well yeah and it's nice to see the chieftain uh, not appear in the exactly. staging area Exactly. We're just going to make it by the skin of our teeth through this quest, so we <laughs> needed that softball from the encounter deck there. I think so, and my big bear friend here will not exhaust to defend for you. Mm, much appreciated. So hoping the wargs stay engaged with me, and I oh, no. am not so lucky. <laughs> well, it doesn't really matter, because Dune here will be able to sort of snipe at them. That's good call right there. <laughs> so it does return to the staging area. Prematurely discarded that shadow card, but no big deal. I guess Bayorn is going to end up taking a couple points of damage. For attacking back, what can we expect from you? Uh, just for fun, I'm just going to swing with uh, these three characters. All right, so five, eight, and uh, looks like a grand total of nine. My arrows are being a little goofy there. So it's going to be more than enough damage to kill our hill troll. I'm going to go ahead and control V to add that to the victory display. That shadow card is going to be immediately discarded. And now, as soon as we get enough progress tokens, we'll be able to pass through our first quest phase. On my turn, Dune here is eligible to attack enemies in the staging area. When he does so, he gets plus one attack. The Dagger of Westerness is giving him plus one attack. So he's going to be swinging for a total of four, which is going to be exactly enough to kill the Wargs, emptying our staging area. And uh, speaking of progress tokens, don't forget that Legolas uh, and the Blade of Gondolin are able to put three on the East Bite for us. Exactly. So Legolas for two, Blade of Gondolin for one, the East Bite is gone, and... Uh, our quest card is pretty much clear. So, any actions before the end of the turn? Uh, that is it for me. All right, so control R, refresh. If you'd be so kind as to make me the first player, let's do our resources and draw some cards. And let's see. I think what I'm going to do on my turn is I'll do one, two three resources for a Galadrim's greeting, and I'm going to drop your threat by six. Okay, thank you. 
and I'll make sure that you actually reduce your threat, <laughs> having flashbacks to our first attempt along the Anduin here. Right. Well, the good thing is now you can sort of see it, and it's in the, in, it's in the chat window, but yes, I, I did exactly. it. I'm down to 23. All right, excellent. So uh, I think that's going to cover it for me. Well, I am one resource shy of playing uh, a fun eagle friend, so I think I'm going to hold off and uh, save up for him. All right. So I suppose that brings us to questing once again. So I've not been so fortunate as to draw any of my potent questing allies. I wanted to leave some resources open for your hobbit just in case, so I'm committing three. Okay, and I will send my usual two. All right. Grand total of five. Let's see what we pull. Encounter card number one is going to be yet another Goblin Sniper for two. Okay. Encounter card two is going to oh, no. be the Necromancer's Reach. So I will pull one resource off Dune here, and I will play a Test of Will to cancel that. So Mary survives, and we're going to end up putting three progress on our current quest phase. Nice. All right, so I suppose that's going to bring us to travel, and nothing happens. This goblin sniper sitting here, I suppose you can take. Doesn't okay. really matter too much. Right. Combat phase, let's do a shadow card. I will have a Baragon to defend for you. Thank might you. as well. Yep. No shadow card, so yep. Baragon takes no damage. And that nasty location. Right. And then I... How do you want to deal with this goblin? And Legolas is enough. All right, so Legolas is indeed more than enough. Goblin Sniper is killed, and that's going to be one, two, three more progress on our active quest card. Sounds good. All right, so refresh. I'll make you first player, and let's draw a card. Do our resources. Okay. And what are we seeing for you? Well, I'm not sure if I've ever played this ally, but I am going to play Landraval. Excellent. And uh, anything and, else? Um, I could... No, I think, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Okay. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and strip three resources off of Baragond, and I'm going to go ahead and put out Bofur. Uh, I was intending to use him to dig for weapons... But it looks like we're doing okay. So I'm definitely going to appreciate his uh, added questing ability. There. Yeah, and Landerval is going to help us a smidge there as well. Excellent. So I think I will spend two more resources for an Imladris Stargazer. And ah. I'm going to wait until after questing to trigger that. There's but, the astrology uh, that you were talking about. <laughs> well, I'll just call her Miss Cleo in the <laughs> future okay, Exactly. But that's going to be it for me, so let's go ahead and do questing. I'm going to go ahead and send five. All right, I'll send a whopping three. All right, so looks like we're doing eight combined. And counter card number one is going to be Misty Mountain Goblins, which okay. is going to steal progress tokens. And counter card number two is going to be the oh, Eastern geez. Crows, okay. which surge. Yeah. In counter card number two is now Dull Gulder Orcs. So, looks like you have to pick a character committed to the quest to take a little bit of damage. Well, luckily I played Landerval, and he has a decent pool of hit points. Right, right. And so, so he's going to have to take two damage. It's kind of a lot. All right. But he takes it like a champ. <laughs> Indeed he does. <laughs> looks like we're going to be up against five threats. We're going to make one, two, three three progress total, and that means we instantly transition to our next quest card. So quest phase 2A and 2B. Uh, <clears throat> Once we hit next turn, we'll be revealing an additional encounter card. We no longer make engagement checks, so now it's just optional engagement, which works for Dune here. Yeah. So travel we don't have any options for engagement who do we want to take we've got these terrifying crows we've got the goblins we've got the orcs well i can certainly take the crows and defend those with bjorn <laughs> sure i suppose you might as well take the crows uh i suppose i might as well take the misty mountain goblins i well would you if you take the 
orcs that uh why uh, don't we swap them <laughs> Glorfindel can kill the orcs on his own um and then dune here could kill the the goblins in the staging area on his own sure i was thinking uh yeah and so no sort matter... of keep it the way we had it so give me the give me the crows you take the the orcs and then the goblins stay in the staging area okay i was thinking uh Let's see. Did you want the crows or the yeah, orcs? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll take okay. those because Orphandel can kill the, the orcs. Sure, and Ligolas could shoot all over the place, so no matter how we arrange it, we should be able to deal with these guys just fine. Yep. So, combat phase, let's do some shadow cards. How do you want to resolve Eastern Crows? So, Bjorn uh, will defend mine. All right. Shadow card is remove one progress token, and there are none. Nice. So Bjorn survives with yep. no damage. The Dol Guldur orcs, I'll go ahead and defend with Baragond. And uh, another nasty enemy we're not going to have to deal with. He, of course, takes no damage for attacking back. And you know, I misspoke. I was thinking he had Spear of the Mark on him for whatever reason. He, Dune here is not enough to kill the goblins on his... Oh, no, yeah, he is, because he gets yeah. plus one from himself. Edit right. that shit out. Okay. Um, so I will kill the crows with Legolas. Alright, since you've got more than enough attack power, the crows are killed and it really throws me off that the arrow just appears as opposed to uh, dragging <laughs> out. So, these crows are defeated and shuffled back into the encounter deck. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in there, shuffle, and then I will go ahead and trigger one, two, three, progress. Nice. Uh, from my side of the table, I will have Glorfindel swing and do just enough damage to kill the Dol Guldur orcs. Mm -hmm. And then I will have Dune here, who gets beefed up to three from his ability, who gets beefed up to four from the Dagger of Westerness, uh, end up having enough damage to kill the Misty Mountain goblins. And of course, their forced effect wouldn't have mattered, even if they'd have been engaged with us. But yep. And uh, I was so excited by all those attacks, I forgot that I drew Foe Hammer. So let me go ahead and draw some cards. Okay. And before we get to the end of the round, I'll trigger the Imladris Stargazer, choosing myself to look at the top five cards. And I'm going to rearrange these as follows. I think, like, that works just fine by me. All right. So, I suppose that's it. Uh, yep. Shall we refresh? Let's do it. All right, so refresh, and you've made me first player, resource phase, we draw cards, go figure, I knew exactly what I was going to draw, <laughs> and uh, for planning, I suppose I will dump out an Atir Swordsman, Okay. and that's going to be it. Oh, well, similar to you, I will be playing another Outlands character, <laughs> All right. for one. I'm going to give Legolas the Rivendell Blade. Excellent. I may have one of those coming up soon myself. Nice. And then I've got three resources left. Uh, I think I'm going to hold on to my remaining resources. All right. So I suppose we might as well transition into the quest phase. And you know, I'm actually going to sort of switch the way I paid for things just because Mary is a little uh, fragile there. Sure. <laughs> and he is very fragile, this uh, staging, just to yeah. give you a heads up. Not that he couldn't be saved by um, Landerval, he certainly could. Uh, yeah, I guess it's been so long since I've looked at Landerval, you're totally right. Uh, nice thing about that ability is I guess he doesn't even need to be um, ready for that right. effect. Mm -hmm. So, cool. Yep. We're going to be revealing three encounter cards, but for committing characters to the quest i suppose we might as well commit quite a few even though once we hit stage three there's going to be a little bit of an explosion of enemies in the staging area uh, our threat is very low we don't have too much to worry about so for committing i suppose i'm gonna do seven okay and i'll do my three okay so grand total of ten and let's see what we reveal. So encounter card number one is going to be the Eastern Crows, okay. which surge. Encounter card number two, Necromancer's Pass. Uh, I guess actual encounter card number two is going to be Pursued by Shadow. Oh, no. 
So we are going to do some threat raising here. Right, I've got to go up by five. So each character he controls, mine is one, two, three. So I guess I'm at 30, the hill troll threshold. Yep, same with me. So last but not least, encounter card number three is going to be Banks of the Anduin. Okay. What a nasty staging area. <laughs> so... It looks like we're going to be up against four, five threat. We're going to make one, two, three, four, five progress. So okay. we're halfway through. In regard to exploration, what do we want to do? I could certainly travel to the Necromancer's Pass. I'll probably lose some good stuff, but it's nothing that's you know going to ruin my life. Okay, then that's fine with me. All right, so let's get that threat out of the staging area. I will make it active. Let's see what I randomly discard. Number one is Ancient Mathem, the okay. least of my evils. Random discard number two is Gandalf. Oh, no. Which is too bad, but yeah. again, we'll survive. Mm -hmm. So, in counter phase, we don't have to engage with the Eastern Crows. But I certainly will. Excellent. So I will bring that down to you. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and toss a shadow card his way. Right. How do you want to block? Well, I certainly could block with Bjorn, <laughs> but it's probably safer to do it with Baragond. Right. With that six defense, hopefully the Eastern Crows <laughs> doesn't break through. Let's see. Right. Uh, attacking enemy gets plus one. Yeah. So Baragorn Barely, barely hangs in there. The Baragorn? <laughs> Did he have a name change? <laughs> I guess so. So Baragon survives. Mm -hmm. How do you want to attack? Uh, Legolas. All right. So Legolas, again, murders the crows. Shadow card is going to be gone. Let me go ahead and put that back in the encounter deck. And we get some oh-so-important progress tokens. Yep. So our location is gone. We're now seven away from breaking through. Mm -hmm. So... I suppose before combat ends, I want to trigger the Imladra Stargazer on you. Okay. So I'll let you take a look at the top five cards of your deck, rearrange those in your preference. Um, okay. All right, very good. Okay, and I suppose at that point, why don't we control R to refresh. I will make you first player. And now let's do our resource phase. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, again, uh, I'm going to put some range on the table. Not that we've really needed it. And then I've got three resources left. Um, once again, I think I will hold on to those. Okay. For me, I'm going to go ahead and do two resources for an unexpected courage. And my question here is we're not going to need to do too much questing for long. So Legolas is certainly a great contender. Mm -hmm. The only other character I'm even considering is Baragond, but I imagine Legolas is probably best. Yeah, sure. All right, so I'll toss that over to you if you want to take control of it. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm going to do. So okay, cool. For quest phase, we're looking to make seven progress between now and combat. Okay. So I suppose I'll send seven like last time. Okay, I'll send my three. All right, so grand total of ten yet again. Let's see what we reveal. So it's going to be three cards yet again. In counter card number one is the Yikes. brown lands which is really going to cut into our progress mm -hmm. encounter card number two is going to be banks of the anduin encounter card number three is going to be the eastern crows which surges to a despair which okay. is actually kind of frustrating yeah for the first time ever so <laughs> it does resolve we lose one two three four progress we're up against one two three a total of eight threat we're gonna make two progress okay so we've lost a net progress here yeah but for travel no reason not to go to the brown lands that right. forced effect triggers and it's immediately explored right so that's gone Okay. I suppose same as last time. Yep, Eastern works for Crows. me. Yep. All right. Here's a shadow card. It attacks. Baragon defends. Uh, shadow card is effectively nothing. Yep. 
I suppose Legolas does his thing. Mm -hmm. Eastern Crows is dropped back into the encounter deck. I'll shuffle it back in there. Discard that shadow card. And that is one, yeah. two, three progress. Mm -hmm. And then a faux hammer for me. All right. Excellent. I'm not sure I've ever seen a tactics player draw that many cards. Uh, I know. I've drawn six. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> All right. So at the uh, before the end of the turn, I suppose I'll trigger Stargazer on myself to look at the top five. And I will rearrange them like this. All right. So I'll... X out of that, and I suppose we'll refresh. Yeah. So control R. I suppose I'm now first player, resources, and draw one card. I'll do two resources for Arwen Undomio. And how about you? Well, I accidentally put resources on when everyone was selected, and so now I'm not sure how many Bjorn should have, if he should have three or four. I think he should only have three. I might be shorting myself a resource, but um, uh, that's okay. I've got a huge army here and nothing to attack. So Arwen, that's good to see. Um, I can pay one for a vassal. All right. I can do... Let's see. God, there's so many things I can do. I can pay two for another Troll Shaw Scout. And then I think I will hold on to my remaining. All right. I'm starting to think the amount of tactics that we brought to the table is uh, maybe excessive for this uh, dated quest. But uh, again, this was, if, if nothing else, just a run through a game. Make sure I remember what's going on. So... Yeah. Committing characters to the quest, I'm going to send a grand total of nine. I think I'm going to go ahead and trigger, uh, I guess, Baragond okay. with uh, Arwen's ability. So. Sounds good. And I will send my usual three. Okay. So grand total of 12. Let's hope that we can make six. Let's see what happens. So in counter card number one is going to be Enchanted Stream. And counter card number two is Evil Storm. And nobody has threat 35 Oof. or higher. Yeah. In counter card number three is going to be Eastern Jeez. Crows, which surge to another Eastern, Eastern Crows. Crows, which surge to another Enchanted Stream. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to end up making one, two, three, four progress. Okay. I don't suppose you can boost that in any way, can uh, you? I actually can. Halfling Determination. Okay. So we'll, our will power's up by two. All right. So that's going to be another two progress, since that boosts Mary up to four willpower. Uh, is that all of his stats? Yes. Uh, yeah. I love that the uh, chat log is now like a little cheat sheet thing. Yeah. Excellent. So we are going to end up passing to our final quest phase. So 3A and 3B. So when revealed, reveal two encounter cards per player and add them to the staging area. So from now on, we skip the staging step, but we get one last explosion of enemies and locations and treacheries here. So let's see how bad this gets. But encounter card number one is going to be pursued by Shadow. And wow, I guess this is what every single character is not committed to the quest. I have no idea. Yeah, so quest questing has been resolved. So I guess it's going to be we raise our threat an ass load. Jeez. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Ten. for me. Ten so I'm for at me. Thirty-nine. Okay. That's probably the most frightening this card has ever been. Yeah. Uh, getting rid of it. Encounter card number two is going to be Eastern Crows, which surges to a the Necromancer's Reach. Okay. So that is going to deal some damage. My Ethir Swordsman is killed. It looks like Mary. Yep, that's going to kill my Mary, um, but I'm going to return Landerval to my hand. Okay. Mary just stays in play with one damage. Right. So he's back. And at least I guess he's ready, mm -hmm. uh, put into play ready. So yeah. <laughs> looks like we didn't make it through this scenario unscathed, so let me get rid of that treachery. In counter card number three 
is going to oh, be geez. another hill troll, which will be engaging with us. And encounter card number four is going to be a Dol Galder Orcs. But that win revealed effect does nothing as there are no characters currently committed to the quest. So even though we had to gain so much threat, this totally makes it worth it. And uh, at least because of that Gladrum's greeting, you aren't sitting at 48 threat. So yeah. it's the small things in life, I guess. Indeed. But that is going to bring us to travel. And we have a hell of a lot of options in front of us. Mm -hmm. uh, Enchanted Stream is going to prevent us from drawing cards. Should I'm we... honestly okay with that because I have you know stuff in my hand. But uh, either location is fine. Yeah, I don't remember what I would be drawing. We're no longer doing staging, so it doesn't matter too much. I guess we're going to be killing something with Legolas, so we might as well mm -hmm. do an Enchanted Stream. So right. I'll make one of those active for um, engagement well, now. Uh, so I, I have a card that would allow me to attack into the staging area, and since Legolas has Unexpected Courage, I certainly could play it. Um... I'm not. It, it's one less defense. Not that we really don't have a ton of defenders on the table. Yeah, but... and especially with Bjorn not needing to exhaust to defend, I'm not yeah. too worried about all these crows. Okay. So. Yeah, well, I, I was gonna. I would have killed the uh, the orcs, but no, you know, no big deal. And yeah. it would, So doesn't matter. Well, yeah, I guess you might as well. Okay, just for fun. So hands upon the bow. I'll exhaust. Uh, Lego loss to kill the orcs. Okay, so what is it? Three, four, five. They don't have any defense anyway, but they are very, very, very killed. So the Dolgulder orcs are gone. Uh, immediately the enchanted stream is going to be explored. One progress token spills over. Not that it's going to do anything for us. Right. Uh, so now that we're done with the travel phase, why don't we move on into encounter? So there's going to be a lot of nasty stuff engaging with us. Would you be so kind as to engage with our hill troll friend? I certainly will. Very much appreciated. So I'll go ahead and move that down to you. I suppose I'll take a crow's uh, engagement checks. A crow comes to me. Mm -hmm. and a crow comes to you. Mm -hmm. So for shadow cards, I suppose we start with me, just in okay. case we're close to running out, which we're not going to be that fortunate. Uh, I suppose shadow cards are as follows. For defenses, I suppose Bjorn will tank my crows. Uh, sure. All right. Well, thank you very much. So You're crows welcome. number one. Nothing. nothing. He's... Swats at them like flies. Excellent. Crows number two is nothing. yet another nothing. Mm -hmm. For your defenses... Well, since we're on a roll, let's defend some more crows. Are you going to do that one first? That's fine. Well, I guess let's do the crow. So the crow is remove one progress token okay, from the current go. quest. Not a big deal. Nope. And again, Bjorn takes no damage. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, our hill troll, Baragond, has a total of seven defense... I think it is possible for him to take damage, but let's see. So in Shadow Card is nothing. nothing. So Hill Trolls attack fizzles, and that's that. So for attacking back... So I have to do 12, right? So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And I guess there's that Rivendell Blade, too. Certainly, yep. So you don't even need that much. Nah. But, you know, I mean, I like attacking with tons of people, so I'll even send in the archer, even though he's not needed. Right. Whoops. Transferred that damage. So I've lost track with what you've sent, but it's more than enough to kill the hill troll. Let's control V, add that to our victory display. That mm -hmm. shadow card is immediately going to no, be gone. Right. And, you know, I got so excited I probably shouldn't have used my archer. I forgot I have some crows. Right, right. So I'll hold him back. And on my side of the table, Dune here will kill a crow... Glorfindel will kill a crow, so those shadow cards are going to be gone. Yep. I'll go ahead and shuffle those back into the encounter deck, not that it really matters. How do you want to deal with your crow? Uh, Legolas's ability would have triggered, but since we don't need quest points, it is not a huge deal. Right. And then uh, my archer 
can kill my crows. All right, so your crows are also going to be shuffled back into the encounter deck. That shadow card is going to be discarded. At the present moment, we do have three locations in play, but taking a look at our final quest card, we have three out of the requisite zero progress tokens. Once there are no enemies in play, and we have indeed vanquished that heinous swarm of crows the players have won the game so congratulations matthew you've successfully journeyed along the anduin yeah it was fun uh it's still a great quest um you know i don't think i've played a monosphere deck in ages uh usually it's two tactics and a spirit or something and i must say having three tactics resources a turn was kind of fun i got to pay for most things uh land of all was certainly fun it allowed mary to survive so no dead heroes even though there's quite a bit of damage on the table but absolutely a fun foray back into to video making Definitely. Uh, I'm not sure if this was the most thrilling video to watch or even to make. Those crows, you know, they really gave us a run for our money there. But <laughs> in the end, we pulled through. We didn't lose any heroes. We actually had a couple close calls, which was interesting. But uh, go figure, using a much larger pool of cards, the difficulty gets reduced a little bit. I don't remember our uh, initial couple forays down the end being quite so simple but uh right. we've got the nightmare version to look forward to soon like i mentioned uh, as soon as the season four game night kits come out we'll have 11 different new encounter decks to take a look at that are of the nightmare level of difficulty we've got a ton of against the shadow content to cover i've got tons of ideas for solo videos coming out so it was awesome playing with you once again matthew to all the community out there i hope that you forgive my inexplicable sudden vanishing from the community so I'm back, I'm hopefully here to stay, and I've had a blast. I love this game, and it feels great to be back, so any final thoughts, Matthew? No, just, well, yes, uh, welcome back, certainly. Uh, I'm definitely excited to make Progression Serious videos, as I said earlier. Uh, I've, I've missed them dearly. I still watch old episodes for fun and, and nostalgia's sake, and, uh, you know, I honestly think they have made me a better player, uh, constantly evaluating cards and the card reviews and, and getting to play all the scenarios. So, yeah, I, even though we might not have a consistent release schedule like we did in the past, I'm certainly looking forward to our wrapping up of the Against the Shadow cycle whenever we we get to it and just getting to play with you some more sure <laughs> i'm excited to commit all of these new player cards to memory so it's going to be <laughs> great doing the card reviews i look forward to talking about faqs maybe even article reviews all sorts of stuff so the sky is the limit like you said i definitely am not going to be able to stick to the once every three days schedule that the early days of the progression series saw but it's going to be great i'm very excited to have this new channel so as always thank you guys so much for watching i'll just say if you have any comments if you have any ideas for content you'd like to see if you have decks you'd like to share stories you'd like to share really anything feel free to get in touch i'm going to go ahead and put some contact information up on the screen since i've yet to commit it to memory feel free to check out the 10th nazgul page on facebook i'll be making a community there i'll be rehosting all 60 old progression series episodes on this channel so I think that wraps up this first video, and I'll see you guys again soon.